All right, guys, welcome to the webinar. We're going to get started here in just a second. Um, while we're waiting for some more people to jump on here, just uh, be thinking of uh, some questions for us. If you already got some, that's great. Um, you can go ahead and uh, put them in the Q&A box uh, in Zoom that you see there. And we will try to, uh, to get to all of those tonight. Oh, there we go. All right, we got right. audio. We gonna have live video here. Yeah, yeah, okay. you're on. You're on there now. I don't. How come I don't see live video? Um, I'm not sure. You might have it hidden somewhere, but I, I said I'm viewing your screen. Well, here, wait a minute, here are view options, let's see. Nah, I don't. Yeah, it says, I am viewing Dustin McGordy's screen. So all I see is the, you know, the banner with the picture of me and you. Let's see if that changed something. I made you co-host, so... So you don't see these videos in the middle? No, I don't I don't see any live video. All I see is that banner. Seventeen participants share screen. So I'm I'm sharing my screen right now, but I can go ahead and stop. And no, then... that's fine. It, you know, yeah. Look now I yeah, now I see it. So Okay. Yeah, we can go back to that because um, I have some questions that we normally get from people already listed in those slides. Okay, that's fine. I, you know, I just want to make sure that it's working. Everything's um, working the way it's supposed to. So, yeah, I want to make sure that people can hear us. I have we don't have anybody in the chat yet, so. On the other screen, I saw where we had 17 people in at that time. Yeah, yeah, there's still 17. It's just, okay, they can hear you, cool. Okay, um, let me go back and share again. I don't know why this is not there, there we go. So, Just a quick disclaimer for legal purposes up there. Most everything we're going to be doing tonight is just answering questions. So it's not a, not much of a sales pitch, but still got to say it. Yeah. And then basically our, our job here is to, to help provide information and, uh, but, but we never promise results for anybody. You know, we have plenty of members that, that have results that they're very, very happy with, but that it's really up to the individual. So this is definitely not a get rich quick thing. It's, you know, whatever you make it to be. Yeah. So I'm just kind of off the top of my head, I have four or five questions that I got to at least get started. And then people can start putting questions in the Q&A for if you want anything more specific to your, you know, location or your yard, or uh, even if you're just interested in buying, 
um, put them in the Q and A box so we can get those answered tonight. Okay, so um, can I buy, buy plants without a license or even a business? Uh, inside the members area, yes, you, you can. You can buy from other members. You don't, you don't have to have a license. You don't have to have a business. Um, in order to sell plants, you definitely have to be licensed in your state. Every single state has licensing requirements. And basically, that is all about pest control, making sure that, you know, nobody is sending plants that are infected with some crazy pest, you know, that just has spread it to a different part of the country. So that's really what the licensing requirements are about. And can I sell plants without a license or even a business? Uh, legally, no, you should, you know, people do, they do it all the time, you know, today with social media and, and you know, um, all kinds of places where you can advertise online, people do it, but legally you cannot. And the, you know, the Department of Agriculture in your state is not going to be very happy about it because they make it pretty easy to be licensed. It's not, you don't, there's really no requirements. They just want to know what you're up to. And then if you are, if you do have a, a license to, there, there are basically two different kinds of licenses. So um, people like landscapers and garden centers and reef wholesalers who simply buy plants and then either resell them or put them into a landscape design, they they only need a dealer's license. So basically you pay the fee and then you're agreeing that you only buy plants from other licensed growers. If you want to grow plants, so, you know, buy them and pot them up and grow them on or, or root your own cuttings and stuff, then you need a, a grower's license or a producer's license. And that is, you know, it's going to cost a few bucks more. But with that, you also, you know, get there's a there's a, there are inspectors in every state that come around, and they, they all they want to see they just want to see your plants. And they want to make sure that you're not selling something that is completely, you know, overridden with pets. If they come out, you know, I mean, my I've dealt with this for I I can't remember how long we going back, Dustin, forty years at least. Um, yeah. And yep. the, the inspector comes out, they look around, they, they, you know, they know they're very good at what they do. So if you're, if you're growing, you know, like dwarf Alberta spruce, you know, very uh, susceptible to uh, spider mite, they're going to look at it. If they find a few spider mites, they're not going to go crazy. They're going to say, Hey, you got a few spider mites on your, on your, on your dwarf Albertas. And they'll tell you whether they consider it a light infestation, a moderate infestation, and they'll tell you how to treat it. Now, if they're completely overridden with spider mice, they're going to red tag them and ask you not to sell them. But it's not, don't be, you know, do not be intimidated by that because it's a very painless process. And I've dealt with probably four or five different inspectors over the years, and I've never had any kind of a negative uh, interaction with my inspector. All of our members, they get real panicky before their very first inspection. And then afterwards, they're like, wow, he, he was so nice or she was so nice. And answered my questions and provided a great deal of information. So it's really a service that they provide to us. Can I get plants shipped to me on the West coast of the U S inside the business center? You can, um, you know, a lot of our members are more East coast and in order for them to ship plants across the country, it can be done. But there, there are a lot of special hoops that you have to jump through. So um, a lot of our, our members just don't ship to the West Coast. But we have a bunch of members that we have members on the West Coast. And I'm always trying to get more and more member, members on the West Coast that can sell to new members on the West Coast. But we also have a, a handful of really good dependable members that will ship to the West Coast. They know exactly how to do it. And, and they can provide you with all kinds of stuff. So. It's a little more challenging than the East Coast, but you can still get them shipped to the West Coast. So why is it more challenging? It's more challenging because states like Oregon, uh, California, maybe Idaho, they are very particular about what gets shipped into their state because they, you know, they don't want any more pests than they already have. Like here in Ohio, we deal with things like Japanese beetles and gypsy moth and spider mice and stuff like that. 
out there they have that uh, sudden sudden oak death, uh, which which is a thing. But so basically, they're they're just more particular. They don't want you sending your infected plants into their state. So they <clears throat> there are certain requirements. There's a national plant board. You can go to the national plant board online, and they're going to tell you exactly what you have to do to ship to you know every state in the union. So it's it's not impossible. Um, and and we have we have people that you know a lot of times in their ads they'll put right in, in the headline you know west west coast friendly or west coast possible so but keep in mind because it's a little bit more challenging people on the west coast kind of have a captive market so all you have to do is start producing you know a few rid of cuttings and liners and stuff and now you can sell to other people on the west coast and you you've got that captive audience. So, it, you know, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, we got some kind of glitch going on my computer here, but um, there is a question in the Q&A about uh, the so I have a fig bush. Uh, fig bush that produces every year after dying back. When is the best time to make a cutting? Oh man, you're you're at you're really asking the wrong guy because I don't do fig cuttings, but we have a ton of members that do. We've got a member that does like I, I can't remember. It's like over a hundred different kinds of figs, but um. I would think the ideal time would be in the spring when you get that flush of new growth. I teach people about a six week roll with cutting. So in the spring, plants flush out with leaves and then they start putting on new growth. Well, that new growth is really, really soft and tender. And if you try and you know take a cutting and root it, it's just gonna wilt over and then, then you have completely wasted the cutting. But typically, if you wait about six weeks, um, from the time that the plant first makes leaves, that's when the, the wood just hardens off just enough to work really, really well for a soft wood cutting. So we get this question a lot is how much are the plants inside the business center? They're $500 each. So it's a deal then. Yeah. No, you know what? I just did a video that, you know, if you if you're interested in the business center, I just did a video for Dustin yesterday or a couple of days ago. And I go through a whole laundry list of plants that were available. I think I, I looked on February 3rd, right? Because I shot the video on the 4th. And there was a whole laundry list of things that were in there um, off the top of my head. Well, I can I got it pulled up if you want to look at it. I think that's what was glitching my computer. Yeah, yeah, but there were there were hydrangeas for three dollars and fifty cents a piece. There were uh, dogwoods and redbud trees for about a dollar eighty five. Um, I know Joe's got some apple trees listed in here. They're I think seven dollars a piece. Unrooted. There's unrooted cuttings. Like right now, Neil's got a bunch of unrooted cuttings for sale. So you can buy unrooted cuttings with. So you're buying a stick with no roots on it. And then you simply treat them like an unrooted or hardwood cutting when you get them and root them yourself. So those things are are really cheap. Um, I don't know. I want to say fifty to eighty cents a piece. I can't remember now. What? Uh, here we go. Let's see if we can see his pricing. Let's see if it'll be twelve hundred plants for six hundred dollars. But go back up. I think. Hmm. And down a little, okay, here, special deal, $46 on this lot. So special deal, unrooted grape cuttings, a lot of 10 each, six, 60, six different varieties. So you're going to get uh, 60 cuttings, 10, six different varieties, $46. So, you know, you can kind of do the math on that. The other deal, 150 unrooted grape cuttings, looks like that's $98, so... Yeah. So this one, twelve hundred for six hundred is about fifty cents each. Right. So if you're shipping. if you're really going big, you know, then you're at fifty cents. If you're in, in smaller quantities, I think it's going to work out to about eighty cents. And that's going to vary, you know, per seller. Um, you know, and I, I also want to point out that you know we've got a couple of members that, um, you know, like like Roger, 
you know, every summer he lets members come to his house. He's got this crazy, you know, crazy big selection of all kinds of flowering shrubs and stuff in his yard. He's got a, a very successful little backyard nursery, but he lets people come all summer and take cuttings from the stuff he has in his yard because he's got way more than he can ever use. So there's right here, uh, whole hardy figs, hardwood cuttings. Yeah, so I... Yeah, I don't know. Collection number two. There's got to be a price there somewhere in there. This is this is Aaron's ad, and then he's okay. So three cuttings each of the five varieties. So fifteen cuttings for thirty bucks. That those are figs, which are going to be a, you know more expensive than a lot of other things. So. But anyway, Roger lets people come and take cuttings uh, from the flowering shrubs in his yard. And right now, I think he's got an ad on the board for Japanese maple scion wood. So if you're interested in grafting. Um, yeah, right here. Yeah, right there. If you're interested in, in grafting, what's he say? $2 each. So you can buy a, a Japanese maple scion from him. And he's got a lot of rare varieties. So you're not going to find these varieties at your local garden center. That's you know, and that, that's the beauty of this. I, I can't remember how many he said that he had. Um, um, look at the, yeah. My computer's going super slow for some reason. Is it? All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at another question while we see if we can get those things open. All right. How All many right. members are in the business network? Um, to be honest with you, I have no idea. I, and that's an honest answer. Maybe Dustin can tell you differently, but you know, we put for years and years and years, we put people in on a trial membership. We let people test drive it. And then so, a lot of them would stick it out and others would say, nah, it's not, I'm not ready to do this. And they drop out. So that kind of skews our, the numbers that we, you know, the, that our software shows. So take a guess, Dustin, how many members are in there? That are Reg registered there's over six thousand, but I I was trying to pull it up in time, but it didn't look like it's gonna happen. It's kind of funny because people will be in there and they're you know when they first join, they're very, very active and then they get wrapped up in running their little nursery and then you don't hear from them, then all of a sudden they're back in there. And then some people will grow and sell plants for five, ten years, and then they're finally like, you know what, I'm finally gonna retire, retire because you know, so um, but there, there's always it, the 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 boards are very active. I just went and looked and read all the the posts that showed up today. Um, you know, it, it took me probably a half half hour just to go through the posts that were new today. So starting from scratch with the business, what do you suggest I do first? Well, the the, the very first thing that you should do is is get into the members area. You know, one one of the things that I, I wanna I wanna mention because we talked about licensing and, and, and all that kind of stuff. One of the biggest rules in this business is that you have to be growing and selling plants that are properly labeled. That's, that's you. So in other words, you need to know exactly what you have. You need to know what the botanical name of that is. So you can't just run out in your yard or your neighbor's yard and take a hundred cuttings off of something and then try and sell them because there are so many different varieties and there are some things that are patented. So you don't really know what you're doing. So when you start out, you want to be taking cuttings from plants that are properly labeled and you know exactly what they are. Um, and the ideal way to do that is to go into members area and buy liners, you know? So basically when you're buying plants in the members area, you got a couple of options. One, you're gonna see um, rooted cuttings, which is basically just a stick with roots on it. Uh, they're, they're really cheap. Matter of fact, the other day, what I see in that video, a buck and a quarter for the rooted cuttings that I brought up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and then the liners, a liner is a rooted cutting that has been grown out for like a year. It's going to have a much bigger root system and it's going to start branching out. So you, if you buy a liner, liners are going to be anywhere from two to $3 and 50 cents a piece, but you can buy liners, pot them up. Let's say you buy 50 liners, pot them up and 
within, like I talked about that six week roll in, in the spring, six weeks after spring, you can take cuttings off of those right away. You, a plant, you can take a plant, I, you, I take cuttings off of rooted cuttings in my cutting bed. I mean, you know, as long as that it's got new growth on it and that growth, growth has had a chance to harden off, you can take the cutting. So when you're starting out, you buy like 50 liners, um, pot them up, get cuttings, and then you can sell all of them or sell half of them and get your money back. So let's say you buy them for, um, you know, two and a half bucks a piece. I retail, this year I'll be retailing all of my plants in a, in a pretty small container, smaller than a one gallon, for $8.97 each. So you can, and I just did a whole thing in, in, the, in the members area yesterday or earlier today about that step-by-step -step process of doing all that. And then we did a, like a whole, pro, actually, I think I tell the pros is how, how to get started on a shoestring. And then I found some old articles that I'd had for a long time and I put them in there. So, you know, uh, people are, today people are calling that post liquid gold. So uh, that, that'll really help out. And then on, uh, uh, on Mike's Backyard Nursery .com, we also have a, a post that's titled uh, 21 plants that are easy to grow and sell like crazy. I, I did that list years ago, and I think my original list wasn't 21, it was 37. And since then, the members have added, I don't even know, but it's a massive list of things that are easy to do and sell like crazy. And I share a link to that on the board all the time. I just put it on there today. So that'll be easy enough to find. Um, and, and if I if that doesn't completely answer your question, just, just ask it again in a different way or what I didn't cover, Phil. So. All right, so Terry said, I know that I can't sell a color or a plant that is still under patent. If the patent is set to expire in two years, can I propagate that color, color now and sell it when it goes off patent? No, you, no, you cannot. So when the plant is patented, that protection lasts completely through to the end of that, that, that patent period, which is I think it's 20 years from date of application when they apply for their for their patent. But you can't like get a head start because it's it's illegal to even take five cuttings and give them to your grandmother. That's just part of the patent process. So, but keep in mind, and, and I, I tell people this all the time, <clears throat> there are so many plants out there that are in the public domain that look a lot like other plants that you don't even worry about things that are patented that you can't propagate. There's, there's an endless list of things that you can propagate. And the members are really good about, you know, kind of keeping track of what's coming off patent and, you know, when it's free to, to start propagating that. So that, it's pretty, that's a pretty common discussion that we have on, on a regular basis. So um, other questions, you know, jump in. We need to, you know, we want to cover as much stuff as we possibly can. Another question is, um, how do I accept payments as a plant seller? Well, in our members area, our rule has always been um, that if you're buying and selling in the members area, we've always asked that you you do so using PayPal simply because that protects the buyer. So in other words, you know, if you were paying cash or, or check and we did this early on and people lost money, you know, because some people would get, you know, get real aggressive and, and say, I'm going to offer, you know, 500 pink dogs this spring and then a whole bunch of people would order and then something would happen and they couldn't follow through. So we, we stopped that. So now I tell everybody to use PayPal because that, that protects the buyer. So if you buy plants and they don't show up or they're really, really bad, the first thing you should do is contact the seller, let them know. And if you have to, you can file a dispute through PayPal. So you're not taking a chance when you're buying in the members area. How often does that happen? Not very often. You know, we, we've got a really, really great track record of people shipping really good quality plants. So, and if you're selling locally, um, you can use PayPal to sell locally. And I use Square. A lot of people use Square, like from SquareUp or Square.com. It's it's 
the best merchant service I've ever seen, especially for doing this kind of stuff. Because I don't, I don't know, Dustin. Do they charge you to even sign up? I don't remember. If they do, it's not. not no, just the and, processing fee. I think for each yeah. order, and the money. processing fee might be like three percent and in twenty cents, twenty five cents or something on it for a transaction, but. Compared to other merchant accounts, it, you know, Dustin will tell you that's a bargain because all winter long when I'm not doing anything, not selling any plants, I'm not paying them a dime. Where other merchant services, they charge you hundreds of dollars a month, even if you're not doing anything. So yeah, and they've got tons a of, really great option. And they got tons of rules and regulations most of the time that just get in the way of, of yeah. doing what you and, to be and doing. that's not the case with Square. They're they're really good. And you know, you can do it on your, your cell phone. Um they 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 used to have that little thing that just plugged into your phone. I don't know. I guess they still have that, but they, they really want people to to they have chip readers that you can buy from them so you can read the chip on the card, uh, because that's a safer way to to you know process cards for everybody. But uh, I I bought a terminal, it's a square terminal, and I think I paid three hundred dollars for it. But it's got a little printer on it, and you know it you, it it reads the chip cards. You're supposed to be able to just tap cards on it. I've never set it up to do that, um, but that thing works great because you just put in the amount and stick the card in, and then you can print a receipt right out. It's got all your information, you know. Um, so. But again, you don't have to spend that kind of money up front. You know, there's a lot of ways to to do it for a lot less than that. What is the best type of plant to start with? Trees, shrubs, flowering shrubs, etc. Um, you know, people go crazy over Japanese maples, and I'm one of them. I, I'm a Japanese maple fanat fanatic, but it's probably the, the least profitable item that I grow and sell. And I, I don't really recommend that you fool with those starting out because there's just so many things that are so much easier. Like right now, uh, I'm getting ready to start doing my hydrangea hardwood cuttings. Probably, I usually do them right around the 1st of March, but this crazy winter, uh, I might jump on it a little bit earlier because I I'm, I don't want them to leaf out to start leafing out. The dappled willow, I do those as hardwoods. And, they always leaf out really early, so I got to get those done pretty quick. But I'll do those hardwood cuttings, and now I'm sticking those right in a quart container with potting soil. I can be selling those things by, you know, it, July, the end of July, into the fall, because they'll be rooted, and, you know, by then we will have trimmed them, you know, at least once. So, so I would suggest that you do flowering shrubs and perennials. Boy, perennials are, are great. And if you get in the members area, you can buy perennials. Um, I pot up perennials and within weeks they're ready to sell. So uh, that's perennials and they're, they're popular, you know, things like bee balm and cone flowers and, you know, the black eyed Susans and the hardy geraniums. I mean, the list is endless. I, I order in we and we also have wholesale sources where you can buy those, those perennial plugs in trays. They, they come like either 30, 30, 32, 50 or 72 to a tray. And you can, you know, there, there are some wholesale sources that you can, if you're a member and you're a member, you become a member of the trade and you can deal with these wholesale sources. Um, if you're not, then they're, they're not going to sell to you. But we, we teach you how to, you know, let them know that you're serious about this and you are actually starting a business. So they will do business with you. But in the members area, there's always all kinds of perennials being offered, you know, smaller quantities at, at pretty good prices. So. That's a great item to start with as well. Um, Clinton says an alternate to PayPal. He says Squirrel. I don't know. I um, I'm not even familiar with Squirrel in the members area. We we've been PayPal for years, and just recently I told people that if they wanted to use Square in there, they they could do that. So you know, this is always an, an evolving thing. Um, most importantly, we just want to make sure that our that people who are buying plants are protected. If for some reason the deal goes south, that you can, you know, um, you you've got recourse where you can get you get your money back if you feel as though you have not gotten the value that you paid for. So, but I'm assuming a squirrel, Dustin. You know what squirrels that a like kind of oh, like God. a type thing. I've never heard of it. Yeah. 
biggest thing is just protection for both buyer and seller, really. Right. And I know PayPal and, and Square both offer that. So right, you know, and I I know today a lot of people, a lot of a lot of people that sell from home are doing a lot of Venmo. Um, you know, their their retail customers are are paying them through Venmo. I've never used Venmo, but I know it's pretty popular in Cash App and you know. Yeah, Venmo sure. Venmo is a PayPal company. Um, is it? Yeah, and they do all they do have a business. You can set up a, a personal profile or a business profile. So that's, it is another good option. Yeah. So there, there are a lot of different options. So if Clinton says, thanks, I volunteer for our local extension. We have a spring plant sale. So I, okay. So I guess you're looking for a way to cross payments. And, and today yeah. you, you have to do credit cards because, you know, probably at least 70% of our sales are on a credit card where years ago I didn't even take credit cards. You know, we would end up with a stack of checks and a big pile of cash, but, uh, today, you know, everybody is kind of walking around with plastic and that's how most people want to pay. And that's a good thing because like with Square, you know, a lot of them, you, you know, you, you swipe the card and the, the money's in your bank account the next day. So, yeah, all right, I, what haven't we covered? Uh, I think that was all the questions that I put in there, just the default ones that we usually get. I'm sure there's tons more, but... Just kind of hoping we'd get some more specific stuff from uh, attendees. So, um, I don't know. What do you? What is well, some common I mean, stuff that people go the, in and ask? The questions that we always get. I mean, we've kind of covered where and how to get plants to get started. The next thing that you're looking for are containers. A lot of our members get um, all kinds of containers, like landscapers have tons and tons of containers that they want to get rid of. Some of them give them away free. Some people, some want to charge you a little bit for them. Um, but the smaller containers, like I like to use, cause I use a, like a, it's, it's, I don't know, it's kind of like a two quart container. It's probably uh, five inches across, six inches deep, a little bit smaller than one gallon. So those are a little bit harder to find and you you actually have to buy them. Um, I just bought a thousand of them today. The price, uh, you know, has gone crazy with, you know, oil, when oil prices went up, the containers of, the price of containers shot way up and then they were rare and really, really hard to get. And um, now oil prices have come down a little bit so, but uh, what in the world am I doing? But uh, uh, the price of containers is not. So I, I think I bought a thousand containers. Yeah, so I think I paid 67 cents a piece for them. And, and I used to get those things for 20, 25 cents. So um, hopefully I they'll be back right. down. But, yeah, but anyway, if you're in the members area, you just ask because, you know, especially there's some uh, around the country, there's the different, um, if there, if you have an Amish community, a lot of times they have a little nursery supply places in the Amish communities because they do a lot of that kind of stuff. So that actually the company that I bought today is an Amish family that uh, has a little nursery supply place here in uh, North, you know, Northeast Ohio. So, um Let's see. Uh, should I get the required license prior to start up, or uh, you don't need a license until you are ready to sell. So, if you you know you can grow and do anything you want to do, and uh, the the state doesn't really care until you're you're ready to sell. Then they want you to be licensed and, and inspected. So I tell people to get licensed like six months ahead of time because. Different parts of the country, the, the inspectors are shorthanded and way behind, and it kind of takes them a long time to get around. And uh, but so, but what I also tell people is don't wait to start selling plants. So the, the the thing that I tell people today, if you go in the members area and you buy, let's say you buy twenty five liners, my my suggestion is is pot them up, keep maybe five or 10 that you can take some cuttings off of and then sell the rest at a profit right away. Because when you start doing that, then you're going to realize that one, people really do want to buy plants from you and it's going to keep you inspired because 
you know, when you start something like this, it's pretty easy to get discouraged. That's another big part of the members area. If you get discouraged for any good reason and don't expect your family member, your friends and family to support you because that's just not how it works They're, You know, they're going to give you every reason under the sun in most cases, why this isn't going to work and you can't grow plants and nobody's going to buy from you. And we hear it all the time. Uh, and that's why, you know, in the members area, we have a huge support system where if somebody starts feeling like that, you know, and of course, you know, people will start posting their successes in the members areas so that really helps you understand what they're doing and what's working. So, um, so I, again, you, so I, I kind of would like to see you get a license right away so you can start selling right away, you know, because that, that really kind of is going to help you get off to a better start. Uh, Mike, what will you be sticking your hydrangea cuttings in, sand or potting soil? So when I'm rooting stuff under mist, softwood cuttings in the summer, I use coarse sand. But when I do my hardwood cuttings, I just stick them in my regular potting soil. And now I do them later in the winter. Like a lot of times, I you know, like like. April 1st, the end of March was a really good target day, but this winter has been so mild that I'm really thinking about jumping on them a little bit earlier. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I've done them in November and it, it's worked. So, but the hardwood cuttings, I, I stick in potting soil. What kind of a growing media do you recommend? Um, Probably not the bagged potting soil that you can buy in a big box store. It's just got way too much peat moss. It's too sticky. It stays too wet and it doesn't drain well. So we use a combination if you can find it. And a lot of people, you know, the, the ideal the ideal combination is, is like uh, pine bark, really fine pine bark. Pine bark finds probably like a 75% pine bark to you can add some peat moss or compost. So really all I do is 75% is pine bark, and then I add my own homemade compost to that. So I put about 25% compost in it. Now, when you're looking around, you're not going to find, you're probably not going to find those pine finds in a bag. But if you're, if you know, if the big box store or garden center or whoever near you has a soil conditioner, check the bag because a lot of times they use pine finds as a soil conditioner, but they don't label the bag that way. So a lot of times they're, they're exactly what you're looking for is hidden in a bag called soil conditioner. And of course, you know, years ago I used uh, like triple, double ground, triple ground hardwood bark mulch and just let it uh, decompose a little bit. That, that's a great source and it's a little bit easier to find. Um, not not tree chips from a free free tree chips from a tree chipping company. Those things they're not they're not terrible, but you they have it's going to take them two three four years to rot down. So they're great to get some on hand. You can use them for mulching. You can use them to to dry up muddy paths around your place, and you can get them in a pile and let them start to decompose because they will make a really good compost, but it's going to take some time. Um, let's see, Manning says, I have access to used landscaping containers. Can I use them? Yes, you can. And, you know, a lot of people, especially on the internet, are going to say, oh, God, you got to wash them out with bleach and blah, blah, blah. I've never washed a container in my life, and I probably never will. Now, if you're on the West Coast and you're in California, Oregon, they might require you to rinse the containers because of that sudden old uh, death syndrome that they have out there. So out there, it might be a requirement, but most of us just don't do it. I mean, when you stop and think about it, most of these nursery containers are black. You stack them up, you put them in a pile, the sun beats down on those black containers, it's probably 200 degrees in there. Living organisms need moisture, and they're definitely not gonna, you're not gonna maintain any moisture in that empty pot, you know, with the sun beating down on it. So that's my take, and I've never, we, we recycle containers all the time because, you know, we end up dumping things out that didn't make it, whatever. We, we don't rinse our container, so. Where is the best place to start selling plants? Well, probably the best place is just locally, like through a uh, Facebook marketplace or something like that, because you can, you know, you can find buyers relatively easily. Um, right now, 
I mean, I'm, I, I do, I run all of my ads on Facebook and advertising on Facebook is a little bit trickier and, you know, you got to spend money like you would anywhere else, but you can get a really, really good return on your investment if you do it correctly. And we talk about that in the business center all the time. Um, you, in the, in marketplace, you can advertise some stuff for free as long as you're careful about it. I'm not quite sure what their rules are if you're a business or not. So, um, but like like now I've got I don't know maybe three four hundred uh, green giant arborvitae that I want to move this spring I'll put them in marketplace and then they give you the option to boost the ad so in other and the beauty of of, of Facebook is they you can boost an ad for like two dollars a day and then or or ten dollars a day or whatever you want and then if for some reason it's not working you just turn it off. You only pay for what you want. So you're not really sticking your neck out. Years ago, before social media, we used to have to run a newspaper ad and we would have to commit to a $250 ad spend, not really knowing what the weekend was going to do. But every single time it worked great. You know, I, I never ran a newspaper ad that I lost money on, They're not even close. So. Okay, I'm trying to grow boxwood shrubs to learn how to grow plants for, for propagation. They are turning yellow. Do I have to prune them back? Um, boxwoods are, that they, they will turn, boxwoods oftentimes will turn yellow during the winter because the tips burn, especially out in the field, you know. Um, but they do root relatively easily if you do them like during the summer months, kind of as a softwood cutting. So um, my my biggest concern with boxwood is they are so doggone slow growing that um, there's a demand for them. I get people asking for them all the time. It's just that it takes, you know, to, to, to root a cutting and put it in a small a two gear or two quart container and get it. You're going to be at least three years, you know, minimum. To, to do that, where a flowering shrub, you can do that maybe in six months to a year easily. So that, that's my only concern with boxwoods. It, it, they're great. They're, like I said, they're the big market for them, but I would prefer myself, rather than go through all that, I'd rather prefer to buy a big fat liner for a couple bucks and pot them up and be selling them right away. So that's kind of like, you know, tricks of the trade. Dustin, um, this came up in the members area when I was in there just a little bit ago. Um, we, we're no longer selling mist, the misting systems. So are, do, are we going to have a product or how are we going to help people with that? Yeah, we're currently working on putting together a digital kind of how to build your own info product. So I don't know exactly when it will be done, but... Hopefully. And that's going to be relatively low priced. Yeah. The yep. product. So you so you can, you know, um, we just have to get it done by mid-spring so people are ready to go in yeah. June. It'll be done within two weeks at the latest. So. so what we're so basically what that's going to do is that's going to tell you all the components that you need, what to do, how to do, and then kind of how to how to use it. So um, yeah, it's it's got the video that you you shot in the this fall showing how to set up the the timer but i'm also going to include a number of other videos that we've had kind of in the the vault for a while that are okay. related to you know you know automated propagating yeah because that it missed is like magic i mean it, it really is you know a lot of people try and go without it and you can do it but it's just just so so doggone simple um and when dustin gets his product done in a few weeks um uh, that's going to make it painless because it's it's probably going to be way cheaper than the product that we've been selling for years. So. Oh yeah, we I mean, it was the whole kit was three hundred and twenty something for years, and this was I haven't set the price, but it, I'm wanting it to be less than fifty for sure. Right, and then you're going to have to buy a few components. You know, the the timer controller thing is going to cost you. What would we say like right around? It depends though. Yeah, I Maybe. saw a couple that were uh, 100, 112. It's just a matter of, it's right. really supply and demand, honestly. What I've seen, I've gone back and looked on Amazon even, and they'll, they'll show two or three left. And the next time they have some, the price goes up a little bit. And Yeah. But there are, like, it's not just a, a one-man show. There's all kinds of different timers out there. You just, it's, it's important you find the right 
type for what we're doing. That's right. Some people and then there are there are way more options there ever were. You know, when I started, I I bought some crazy thing that didn't really work, and I had to kind of redo the whole thing and kind of reinvent it myself. But I've seen very uh, very uh, easy. I saw I found one that has an app you run from your phone and it connects blue, via Bluetooth. It right. doesn't even need like all the. I remember back on Middle Ridge, you were wiring stuff up and you're like like zapping wires and stuff. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah. We were using industrial timers and all yeah. kinds of stuff. But yeah, you know, you're right that these these newer timers timers today are do have a Bluetooth app, control, app where you can control the timer from your phone. So yeah, there's a lot more options and they're a lot less expensive than they ever were. So there's no good reason not to do mist. So and it, a lot of the 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 uh, roadblocks that that a lot of our customers have had in the past preventing them from using ours, like you know, my, I don't have a, a power outlet that is a hundred yards away from where I need it. Like you 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 can do battery ones, you can do solar ones now. Like there's so right. many different options for the timers that yeah, and, you can and find I, something for your specific uh, situation easily. Yeah, and that's good. That's gonna you know that that's gonna evolve, and we'll have all that information available. So. Okay, uh, Lois says we have access to alpaca manure, which is not hot, and this manure will be used as the compost part of your potting mix. I'm sure it can. Um, I, you know, my compost pile is a combination of donkey manure, hay, straw, potting, you know, where we empty our dead plants, um, weeds. Trimmings, you know, because we're constantly trimming plant. All that stuff goes into the into the the potting soil pile and or the compost pile, and a lot of it is hay and straw. But man, it it rots down and it's really 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 good. And that's so that's exactly what I'm putting mixing with my pine bark. So yeah, most importantly, you know, the other thing that we haven't talked about is you know you need a good potting mix that drains well. It doesn't have to be super rich. You don't want to use something really hot like fresh chicken manure, but your your most of your nutrition is going to come from a slow release fertilizer, not garden fertilizer, not fertilizer you're going to buy in a big box store. You're going to need a commercial nursery fertilizer that and then you only put like a tablespoon on there. The stuff is not cheap. It's probably, I don't know, right in the neighborhood of hundred dollars a bag, depending on where you buy it for 50 pounds. But you you know, you only put a tablespoon in there and that will feed the plant for like five months. So all of my plants get one shot of fertilizer a year. And sometimes I don't even fertilize in the second year because I'm, I'm probably going to sell them right away. So um, I have a lot of deer pressure in my area. Any ideas on how to keep them out of my growing area? Um, one of our, you know, th this is a million dollar question that comes up a lot. And the answer is a really, really tall fence. But one of our members has a, a motion activated sprinkler. She can buy them on Amazon. And when the deer enter the area, the sprinklers come on. And, you know, uh, they don't like that. They're not going to hang around if they're getting wet. Now, of course, that's probably not going to work, you know, if you're in a cold zone during the winter months. But, you know, during the summer, it, it works pretty well. You know, like rabbits and stuff can do damage in the field. Growers around here, um, they use some mix. They, there's a product called Vapor Guard that you, it's just sticky and they, they use it when they're digging trees to spray on the leaves to hold in the moisture. They would mix Louisiana hot sauce with uh, Vapor Guard and, and spray it on plants to keep the rabbits from eating it. So our little local IGA store sold more hot sauce than anybody in the country. But, you know, we have a bunch of wholesale nurseries in this area. All right, uh, more questions. What's on your mind, folks? Um, I'm looking on the, the first page of the growers discussion and nine of the posts are people searching for plants. Yeah, you're right. And We need, we need growers. <laughs> The demand or the the um, amount of people willing to buy is crazy. And I think we've got, I think there's somebody on the West Coast that's looking for 
Hosta and Green Giant Arborvitas. I think I, I just replied to that post. So now somebody else just asked me, can you shift to the West Coast? But see, that's my point. If you are up and running, you can be the supplier for the West Coast because, you know, we, we really can't have too many suppliers. I, how, Dustin, how many people do you think that we have that sell plants on a regular basis in our buy sale area? It's hard to tell because it, it, there's just so many different ads all the it, time. It's a lot, and they rotate in and out, but they rarely ever compete with one another. I mean, they, they no. may offer the same plants. They may offer them at, at different or similar pricing, but it's never been an issue, and, it's, and, and they never have problems getting rid of plants. Well, that's the thing. Even if it is the same plant and you call it competition, if you want, there's going to, they're going to sell out and then the next guy is going to get the rest of the orders. Right. Or exactly. you can repost it and sell it again the week after that. Right. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that people looking for elderberry cuttings, uh, witch hazel, American witch hazel. Right. And I replied to that post because somebody's looking for, uh, witch hazel and I think Steve from Pennsylvania responded that he has some yeah. but I also told Steve that we've got a local nursery here that has they grow over 150 varieties of just witch hazel and they're not really a giant nursery it's just that that's their specialty thing um, so and again you you can specialize in that especially you know like you're, you're in Texas and so I think somebody asked me earlier about I'm in the members area about Texas. Well, you know, crepe myrtles are a big thing down there and I'm not knowledgeable about what's gonna grow in those zones, but I know that crepe myrtle are a big thing down there. And there are a lot of crepe myrtle that are free to propagate. There's one series of, of crepe, crepe myrtle that are panded, but they're panded by a relatively little grower and he's very easy to work with people. If you contact him, he will literally give you permission to to grow them and he'll, you know, you pay him like a dollar per plant royalty, which, which is only fair. Um, and a lot of those things are probably already out of getting out of patent by now. So. Yeah. I mean, if I, if I could buy great myrtles that are basically liner size or even a little bit bigger myself, I would buy them for my yard, but you go to the garden center and the only option is a six foot one for 200 bucks. So. Right. And that's why Joe is doing those apple trees because the same thing with the apple trees, they're, you know, if you, even if you go to a, a junkie box store, they're 29, 30, 40 bucks. And they're, you know, and so he's doing them himself and he's selling them for, and I think his ad was $7 and they, I think they're like 18 to 24 inch plants, but it's a great option for homeowners because now you can start a little tiny orchard for, you know, less than a hundred dollars. So same with like, le I was looking at lemon trees and, and the, one of the big box chain hardware chains had the $99 and it was barely three feet tall and it looked yeah. like it was going to be dead next week. Same, same thing here. I mean, you, you know, I'm, in, I'm in the, like a nursery capital, of, you know, of Ohio for sure. Like within a 15 mile radius of from where I'm sitting right now here in North, Northeastern Ohio, there are 100 wholesale grow growers who are all doing probably anywhere from, man, maybe the little tiny ones are doing a half a million a year, but most of them are doing over a million. A lot of them are doing, you know, five, ten million dollars a year. Um, but in a local garden center here, a three foot um, uh, emerald green arborvitae, at 99 bucks. I, I'm just, you know, blown away about the, these retail plant prices. So uh, that's why there's just so much opportunity. And, and another thing that's happening across the country is a lot of these second, third, and fourth generation nurseries are just selling out or closing up because the, you know, the, the younger family members don't want to deal with it. And the property alone has appreciated so much that they can just cash in and live for the rest of their life. So it, it, it just, uh, the opportunities for us small growers just gets better and better and better all the time. Let's see, do you have any plans to add a column to the growers by show that lets people know what state the post is from? It would simplify things for us on the West Coast is not spent time opening. Yeah, you know, this comes up a lot, and people who offer to the West Coast a lot of time will put in their, like, in the heading on their ad, you know, you know, 
West Coast, yes, or something like that. But um, a, a separate column, no, we've not done that. We did that for Canada, and it just hasn't taken off. I mean, people from Canada constantly asked us to, you know, we need members, and nobody in Canada ever stepped up and, and, and started filling those shoes. I know some of our members that sell tons and tons of plants in the members areas, like, man, if I were in Canada, I would be all over this. So for that reason, we haven't done a separate West Coast area. But if you if, if you go into the members area, if you're looking to buy something, first thing you do is go into the main discussion area and say, hey, I'm on the West Coast. I'm looking for this, this, or this, or I'm looking for liners. I'm looking, you know, and somebody's going to tell you either what they have or they're going to tell you what member has them available. So like I said, it's a little bit challenging, but it's definitely, if, if that's what it takes to make you not do this, then you're probably not that serious, you know. And I, I don't mean that to be in a disrespectful way, but, you know, like my grandmother used to say, honey, if there's a will, there's a way. So, you know, take that uh, challenge and turn it into your advantage. That, you know, finding stuff is going to be a little bit more challenging. That being said, we are um, about to make some improvements to the the discussion, well, really the forum part of it, just because we're kind of forced to a little bit with the software that we're using. So <laughs> upgrading to something new kind of gets a lot of added stuff and it's it's just a lot easier to use on the phone. I, I went, I can't use it myself on the phone. Um, and I know a lot of people are just defaulting to that. So it, it's something that we need to, you know, we need to make better for sure. So, so are we going to, go to a different platform that's going to be more uh, small device friendly yeah basically yeah. um we got a i'm working with a, a company to which actually very reasonably priced to take everything we so we don't lose anything we have you know all of the discussion and everything will stay there just be migrated over to this newer software so it'll be a lot more intuitive basically it's that's the thing that uh, I know a lot of members have had issues like trying to find stuff. The search function isn't the greatest, um, you know, adding images, it, it all feels very outdated. So that's something that just within a month, I would say will happen inside. Yeah. that Yeah. The, the images thing has always been challenging and, uh, um, it was almost every member where it was getting to the point where we had to walk them through, you know, like, hey, how do I do this? Because I can't find where I'm supposed to be. And, and, it, and welcome, you know, welcome to the Internet, because no sooner do we get the image thing figured out and say, OK, here's how you do it. And then, you know, um, like one company we're using, all of a sudden they want to charge you like three hundred dollars to host their images. It was free, right. you know, yeah. so it, uh, it, it yeah, it's I mean, always we'll, evolving, always changing. So. We'll be able to host everything ourselves with with this one because it it just it's it's just like WordPress. It, it's smart. It takes stuff in and, and it makes take the, uh, the images makes them really small, and then you can put them on a a server like the server we're using for WordPress with really hardly any additional costs. So okay, sounds good. All right, folks. Um, more questions, more answers, comments. Mean things to say. I don't care. And we sh we should also mention that um, we're once you're in the, the members area, we are going to do. Um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it, you and I talked about it. But I'm pretty sure we're going to do at least one or two Zoom meetings with members, so you can actually, you know, hear. Uh, a lot of times with this question and answer thing, we can get a lot of a lot of people and it. it's just kind of crazy to have that many people on one call. But you will be able to communicate with other members, find out what they're doing, what's working for them, what's not working for them. And on, on these upcoming Zoom calls, and I think we talked about doing like two of them before spring. Yeah, at least if at least two, if not, if we can fit three, we'll do three um, over the next two or three weeks. And whatever, you know, whatever the members want, that's what we're trying to cover in these calls. I know that we've done a lot of them in the past and they are available. The recordings of them are available in the members area. And um, they've been hugely popular because, you know, people 
they buy from one another, they interact with another another. So actually getting get it, being able to have a conversation with them on, you know, on a Zoom call uh, in person is a big thing. Plus, you know, we've been doing a backyard grower shindig, a get together every year for, I don't know, pretty close to the 24 years that I've been doing this. So a lot of our members have become really, really good friends with other members. Like in November, we're going to North Carolina and we're going to have a get together with uh, with Horace and Lisa, who do a ton of Japanese maples. Look, everybody knows Horace and Lisa. They've been to my place, um, I don't know, at least three or four years. They bring a ton of Japanese maples with them and they sell out. So, um, you know, that's that's going to be a big deal. That's something to, to look forward to. So, um, did you see at the top of the business center now? I added a, a bonuses tab. I didn't notice that. So, if you click on that, there's a like a, another page with the list of bonuses. One of them we made a separate page for all of the Zoom recordings for members. So, for any members watching this, that that's an easy way to find all of the Zoom meeting recordings. They're all embedded in one page. We've got some where members have uh, kind of like given us a, a video tour of their own little backyard nursery. And those are, you know, um, part of that as well, I think. Right. Yep. Yep. That's in there. And we did one last year on uh, or maybe two years ago on how to uh, get free advertising from Google. Basically, it was the the shtick. But. Yeah, uh, but man, that, your... that was a ton of information in that one. People, the members really loved that. So. If you get in there, make sure you, you you dig that one out and go through that. All right, so Curtis wants to know, what's the best way to ship plants? Um, the, the short answer is, um, well, in order to be compliant, you don't really want to send plants with soil because in soil, you can have um, Japanese beetle grubs and all other kinds of things hiding the soil. So the Department of Agriculture isn't big on soil. You can do it but it's, it's ideal not to. So the best way to ship plants is to ship them when they're dormant, bare root. And what I do is kind of put them in a bundle and then stick the roots in a bag or, or wrap them in like uh, wet or paper towels and then dip them in water to get the paper towels good and wet, wring them out a little bit and then stick them in a plastic bag, but put a twisty around just above the root crown. So the secret to shipping is moist roots, dry tops. So you want them, the roots to be in that bag with that paper towel, nice and moist, but you want the top of the plant to stay dry. You, you know, if you're shipping during a growing season, um, you can ship like in small pots with soil, just depending, you know, it kind of varies from state to state to state. But I buy, uh, you know, I buy thousands and thousands of dollars worth of perennials and they come in trays that have soil. In them. So um, but there's a lot of... in. And a, a good way to learn how to ship is get in the members area and buy from two or three different members and see exactly what they're doing and, and what's working, you know. We do have this in this blog years. post too. Um, we have this blog post too that kind of, well, it's got that video, but it, it's got some pictures on there that you can. Right. What, what's that? Yeah. And so you can find that at uh, mikespeckernursery.com. Use yeah. the search bar on the website. Yeah, just search like ship plants or something. I think yeah, is what, it'll get you to come up there. Okay, Manny said good information. Really enjoyed the webinar. Thank you. We appreciate that. John says I can get five gallon food grade buckets for a buck each. Can I use to stick cuttings? You can, um, but they're deep, and and you don't. You don't want your cuttings in the bottom of that bucket because then you got all that dead air. And when you're rooting cuttings, especially softwood cuttings um, during the during the growing season, or even your hardwood cuttings when they start leafing out, you want airflow through the leaves. So if you're going to use the five gallon buckets, I would fill them pretty much to the top so your cuttings are up above the top of the bucket, so you don't have that really humid environment inside of that bucket. Same thing. If you're like using a tote or something like that. So Omar said very helpful. Thank you. Um William, I planted river birch in a marsh area, but this winter we had a loss of flooding and they're setting water. Will they survive for spring? 
Um, boy, that's a tough question because plants are just like human beings. They need to breathe. So plants transfer oxygen from the air through the soil, through the root system. And that's why when you plant something too deep or plant it in a wet area, they do not do well at all and usually don't survive. So in, in a flooding situation, um, more than three, four, five days can really be problematic. Now, during the winter when they're dormant, that might change a little bit, but um, it, it's, it's not, I mean, of course, river birch are used to being damp and wet. And so I'm not going to, I'm not going to write them off, but I'm, I'm not, I'm, let's just say I'm going to be a little bit concerned. So, okay. Curtis likes the shipping info. So yeah, that's, that, yeah, that, that, that's always something that, you know, you don't know if you don't know, and that's how we all learn, so. What didn't we cover? Like I said, I in 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 the, the discussion board just either today or yesterday, I, I posted that um, how to get started on a shoestring. And there's a lot, a lot of good information in there, and people really like that, so. Um, We've got another post that we haven't, I haven't posted in a long time, but it's it's called 53 Ways to Kill a Lot of Plants. It's a great post to read because it's going to tell you what not to do so you don't make the same mistakes that other people have made. Um, and that's it's really what we're all about is trying to help other members. Um, and, and it is. People are really, really, you know, very, very helpful. I'm very proud of our members because unlike other areas in social media where, where people fight and bicker, and you know, <clears throat> and spam and do all kinds of stuff. Um, we don't tolerate it. You know, one of the, we, we've got some some simple rules, but one, you you, you have to get along. You cannot be mean spirited. We're you know we're just gonna we we delete very very few posts. But if you're being mean, your post is going to get deleted. The other thing that we don't do, we don't do religion and politics. I mean, that's, you know, we're we're here to talk about plants and that's what we want to do every single day, talk about plants and not, you know, people's religious beliefs or their political beliefs. And we've done that that way for years and it's worked really well. And, it, that, and that's why our members area remains valuable. So, so here's that, that bonuses tab that I was talking about. Opens in a new window, but this... Uh, hopefully it'll open. Was something that I mean, did you? I don't know if you had it or what, but it's basically a bunch of a collection of good stuff from the business center over the years. Or yeah, that's probably stuff that uh, our like my assistant put together a long time ago. Yeah, like Network Fifty Four. Right. Time. Yeah. Yeah, and that was when we were on Network Fifty Four we went to WordPress and a whole different deal and all that stuff got left behind, but there was, there was a ton of great information in there and she captured a ton of it. Um, so yeah, yeah so th that, this is, this stuff is like gold. So that's, that's in there as a bonus. This is a, a report that I just collected from the business center as well. A bunch of different ways to sell plants. So I don't know, 40 some different ways that's in there. Yeah, and, then, and we talk a lot about, you know, how to do wholesale, how to sell the landscapers, how to sell the small garden center. So, again, if, if you want to know in, in the members area, bring it up. Okay, so here's our. These are all the shindigs that I found, virtual shindigs. Okay. Um, so there's one there on wholesale buying as well. Setting up Facebook ad and then that Google 20 minute Google trick. Some stuff from our from a couple different growers showing their right. setup. So there's a bunch of good hours and hours. It's a good time to get in there now while it's winter and watch all this stuff. Um, any ideas on uh, Manny wants to know any ideas on plant identification websites or a book? Um, you know. I, I don't know. Well, when I'm looking for information about plants, um, I'll just Google a plant. And probably one of the best resources that I find is, is the, the Missouri Botanical Gardens website because they they cover a lot of information, zones and, and culture and all that about the plants. And 
So um, if you want to know if something's patented, there, there, you can Google, you can use Google. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but if you ask in the members area, they'll tell you that. I don't do it. What I do is I, I simply Google the plant name and then I look at the mainstream growers like uh, Monrovia and Bailey's and all, you know, you'll get to know these, these names. And then I look to see if they're selling it with a patent or, or a trademark name or anything like that. But typically, you know, it, it's all kind of overwhelming and intimidating at first, but I'm going to tell you a little secret. You're going to learn this one plant at a time. And before you know it, you're going to be an expert. So uh, as far as I, plant identification books, you don't, you don't want to look at a book or a website and then compare the cutting that you got to your off of your neighbor's hedge and say, oh yeah, this is, you know, Ibolium privet because it, it's not going to work. It's not going to be effective. There are plant identification apps that you can get on your phone. You just take a picture of the leaf and it's going to give you, it's going to come close. It's going to tell you that it's a dogwood, but it's not going to tell you whether it's a Cherokee chief dogwood or cloud nine, cloud nine dogwood, you know, or, uh, yeah, or any of the other, you know, cultivars. So um, that's why it's so important to, to start out with plants that are that are properly tagged. And that's the beauty of our members area. You can buy them, you know, you can buy small quantities for, you know, a few bucks a piece. And, you know, you can eventually sell the ones that you buy for a profit. So you don't even have to, you're not really laying out a lot of money. More questions, comments, suggestions. All right, if uh, if that's it, we'll give you a couple minutes here for you. If anything, you think of anything. If not, um, unless Dustin and I find something else that we need to get out here we can kind of wrap this up, but is there anything else that? Uh... Why is a good time to, why is it a good time to join right now? Like what a lot of people think that I should need to wait till spring or. Well, or... the ideal time to join was yesterday, but we can't join yesterday. So today is the ideal time. And I'm not, you know, I'm not really trying to be cute, but that, but that's the truth because there's always, always, always things that are going on. You know, like uh, in that ad that I, I, I shared that I, I pulled off the board on, on the 3rd of, of February, um, there, there are hardwood cuttings that you, you can, you know, take advantage of, all hydrangeas, grapes, and there's probably a lot more. There were Japanese maple seeds, dogwood seeds, redbud seeds. So it's an evolving Ferris wheel of things that, you know, so all of those are kind of like winter projects and they're available right now. Um, you know, in a, in a few weeks, a couple of weeks, the Japanese maple seeds are gonna be all gone. We're gonna be onto something else. Have you ever seen a time when there aren't offers in the buy sell area? The only time that it gets even a little bit slow is like the end of July when it's really just too hot to ship and people are coming off of their spring sales, but it, it catches up really, really quickly. So, um, but there's always something to do, always something to talk about, always something to work on. And there's always things that you can be doing to build your little business. So that's why that information, the sooner you get in, the, the sooner you get to take advantage of all of that. That's a great place to buy low price stuff. And you don't have minimum, huge minimum order quantities like the typical wholesale sources. And you don't need a, a nursery license to buy right away, you know? So people that are just getting started, that's a great way to get started is go in. Like you got unrooted cuttings in there, like, Buy some, get them stuck. It's winter time. Now's a good time to get them stuck, and you have some plants to sell. So John wants to know how do I get into the backyard grower site. So, um, is there if you're uh, backyard growers, if you're not a member, backyardgrowers.com slash go. That's the 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 quickest, easiest way to join. I'll take you straight to the the order form. You can pick monthly or annually, um, and as soon as you order, you should get um instructions on how to register so you have to create a username and a password and then you'll be you should be logged right in after that so if you run into any issues though just shoot us an email at um, support at backyardgrowers.com and we'll get you get you lined up okay so backyardgrowers.com slash go yep 
Okay. All right. Good. A.T. Smith, in Nevada, our soil in many areas is mostly sand. Is there any reason we should not sift out the larger bits and use it for our cutting uh, under misbeds or is, or is the coarse sand you refer to sanitize or other, otherwise preferable? No. Um, the sand that I use is is mined down the road here. There, you know, there's a big silica um, uh, like a vein of silica sand, and uh, this company has been pulling silica stone and silica sand out, out of there for probably 70, 80 years. So what I get is a, it's it's not fine, like mason sand is really fine that they use for laying brick. Um, but that's, that's probably too fine. It might work, but something a little bit larger with pebbles in it is ideal. Kind of like that's concrete science, the sand that they use in concrete. Sometimes they call it sharp sand. So any of that stuff is going to work. So if you've got sand in your, you know, because what I'm buying is not sanitized. It's not treated in any special way. It's not even marketed for the nursery business. It's just used for a variety of different things. So um, if you can, uh, you know, if you have sand and you can kind of sift it out a little bit, there's no reason why it shouldn't work. Barry says, thank you so much to both of us. And you know what? Thank you. We appreciate everybody getting in here. Um, we look forward to meeting everybody in the members area. And we really, really, really hope to see you at one of our upcoming events, you know, because I think I'm probably going to do some kind of an event at my place sometime mid-summerish. And then I think we're going to be in North Carolina at uh, you know Horace's place, they've got a big Japanese maple. Not big, but they they have a ton of Japanese maples down there in North Carolina. That that's going to be pretty special because man, man, they've got really, really, really rare varieties of stuff. So we we've, we've got those two events, you know, that for sure that we know about. So we'll get some dates posted in the members area here pretty quickly. All right. Um, do we cover it all? Yeah, I think so. All right. If you have more, listen, if you're at all serious about either growing and selling or just you want to buy plants and not pay those ridiculous prices, you know, that everybody's charging for the, the low monthly membership fee. And we're not going to quote it here because, you know, down the road, it might change. So, but anyway, um, if you go to backyardgrowers.com slash go, the pricing is right there. There's no secrets, nothing hidden. It's all out in the open. Um, you know, we've been doing this, I've been doing this since 1999 and we've been, you know, helping people do this. So, um, it's not like we just came out of the woodwork and started doing this yesterday. All right. I think we're about done. Yep. If you guys have any other questions, if you're watching this recording, you can email support at backyardgrowers.com. I'll put a link somewhere on the page of this recording too, so you can you can uh, ask us questions there if you got anything, but best we're probably going to tell you the best place to to get them answered is in the business center, unless it's something technical related about the website. Yeah, because if you send an email, um, I'm and I encourage you to yeah, questions send them, but I don't see email ever, and Dustin doesn't see. I, don't I think see what either. Orlai's doing <laughs> his wife his wife is doing the email now. So you're not, she's not going to give you a technical answer. So she's going to recommend that you join the business center to get those answers. Or if you go, if you have another question, you can go to mikesbackyardnursery.com and comment on any post there. I check that place every day and I answer any kind of questions that people have, you know, so that, that's another, that's, that's like the only avenue to get to me. So, or the members area, I, 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 I am in the members area every single day to answer questions. So. But if you have any billing related or or you need to you know update a, a payment method or a question about what's going to happen at the end of the year, thirty days or year, that that's something that we can help you with in the in an email. All right, thank you everybody so much, uh, and have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your winter. It'll we'll all be out there in the dirt before long here. Yep. All right. Good night, guys.